Number 5. Attack on Titan Season 2. Alright, alright, alright. I know that the first season is a bit of an overrated anime that got way too much hype when it first aired, but I can say, with all honesty, that the second season of Attack on Titan is pretty spectacular and you can quote me on that. If you had to describe the first season in one word, it would be the word adrenaline. It fills you up with high energy throughout multiple episodes. However, adrenaline can eventually become tiring and wear you down which is exactly what the first season did as it went into its second part. The second season, in the meantime, has the correct amount of slow pacing mixed in with big adrenaline rushes. It fully embraces its gothic horror that it only dipped into in the first season, and it becomes a much scarier show because of it. The animation complements this gothic horror as much as it does with its big titanic fights. These fights are some of the best choreographed fight sequences that I've seen in anime. It's all huge and a blast to watch. The animation would falter in the first season from time to time, but the animation in this season is so consistent it gives us some truly breathtaking scenes. Another great thing that the second season does is that it takes the underdeveloped and annoying main protagonist, Eren, and completely removes him from the second half of the show. Don't worry, you get better in the next arc. This allows more of the side characters to be developed and have more screen time. These side characters include Sasha, Connie, Reiner, Berto, and most importantly, Mir and Krista. These two ladies were the star of the season as we saw their love and dedication to each other through breathtaking animation and amazing music. It was a very gay season. The Ymir flashback scene is probably going to go down as one of my favorite scenes in anime, with the Call of Silence insert song bringing me to tears. The first thing I thought was if there's such a thing as fate, she's a fickle little whore. <laughs> what else can I say? This season was a vast improvement from the last, and thank god that we only have to wait one year for the next season, because having to wait four more years after this spectacular season would be too much, even for me. Number 4 Blood Blockade Battlefront and beyond. Let's get this out of the way first. This season of Blood Blockade Battlefront is not as good as the previous one. There are various reasons because of this, like the change in the director between seasons, but I don't want to get into it because it would take too long to explain. I think I'll save it for a future video. With that out of the way, I love the second season of Blood Blockade Battlefront. When I heard that this show was getting a second season, I was so excited. After all, the first season was my all-time favorite anime of 2015. And the great thing about this season is that they adapt a bunch of chapters of the original manga that were left out of the first season. And these stories are great! Mostly because some of them focus on individual characters, so we get to know more about them, and that makes them become even more memorable than they already were. Some of these characters including Chain, KK, and Steven. And the new characters that the season introduces are fun as well. This season made me realize what makes these characters as enjoyable as they are. It's because each of them feature extreme personalities, so it's fun to see them interact with each other, and the world around them, and then witness the chaos that sometimes ensues from it. While the season doesn't have a flowing narrative throughout it, except for the final two episodes, this episodic structure is sometimes my favorite in anime, and I like to hear a lot. Now while it doesn't feature the brilliant frame-by-frame -frame action and attention to detail as the last, the animation here is just spectacular. There are some moments that left me breathless. The character designs and action are spot on as usual. Nothing less from Studio Bones. It also helps that we get more information about the world and the characters that inhabit something that the first season was lacking. While I do have some problems with it, which I'll explain in a future video, this season was still spectacular and made me really happy. So... third season? Maybe. Please? Number three. Scum's Wish. There are several reasons that make this anime about unrequited love pretty unique. Each character is in love with another character who doesn't love him back. It's all about unrequited love and it doesn't hold back. All of the characters have layers to their complexity and they are written very realistically. Our two main characters decide to be sexually intimate with each other to silence their loneliness because of their unrequited love for other people. 
This makes the show very erotic. Not sexy, erotic. There are a bunch of sex scenes that are shown in clear and vivid fashion, just without showing any female nipples or any sexual moments involving the characters' private parts. It's not used to show off these female characters' bodies for fan service, but because these characters are intimate with each other. That's it. The anime is very stylized and is a perfect retelling of the original manga. It's also important to note that the manga was written by a woman, giving this romantic drama a unique woman's point of view. This is why the female characters are written better than the male ones, but at the same time, that's kind of refreshing. My favorite character was obviously Echon, and how she was in love with her best friend Hanabi. And yes, they show them making out and being very intimate with each other in clear detail. There is no censorship here, it's shown without any reservations. This lack of censorship of these more intimate moments makes the anime more realistic. As I said before, the writing in this show is so realistic that it became really relatable for me at some points, which is probably why I like this one so much. The only problem is that the writing does slip with one of the subplots during the end of the show. It felt extremely rushed and not at all realistic, taking a more predictable route that wasn't like the rest of the show. The rest of the show, though, takes different and realistic twists to the sometimes predictable romance drama formula, and I really appreciated it for that. This will definitely be an anime that I'll remember for a long time. Number 2 Miss Kobayashi's Dragon Maid. Oh boy, I really like this one. I remember watching the first episode and thinking, you know, I like this, but I'm not sure why. By episode 4, I was like, I would commit a felony for all of these characters. There's just something very heartwarming about everything that happens in this show. I really like how it takes the Monsagro genre and adds a unique twist to it by having Toru, who is a female dragon, fall in love with a woman named Kobayashi after she saved her life and invited her to live with her, confessing her love to her and eventually becoming her maid. The two bond with each other and even though their relationship doesn't become a sexual romantic one, they do become sort of like a family. Like when Kana shows up and the two of them sort of adopt her as their child. That's probably my favorite part of this show. It's theme on family. Dragon Maid takes a look at families that you make instead of families that you are born into. It's an interesting point of view that you don't really see it often in media. As the episodes go on, the characters become like a family. Like how eventually Kana says that she thinks of Kobayashi as her mother, or that Kobayashi goes to Kana's sports festival. Not because she wants to go, or that she should go, but because she ought to go. Because Kana is like her daughter now. Kobayashi states that she was a lonely person who stayed mostly to herself until she met Toru, and now her co-workers comment that she acts differently, like she's a changed person. And I really like that. The supporting cast are pretty good too, with the best ones being Takiya and Fafnir, whose bromance shall live on in infamy. The only parts that I wasn't okay with was anything involving Lukua and Shota. While I like the characters individually, the scenes of them together always came across as creepy and a little uncomfortable, but anything not including those two together were perfect in my eyes, and it's a great and heartwarming show that thawed my heart during the winter season. Number 1 My Hero Academia Season 2 Oh yeah! My Hero Academia is back and I'm so glad it is! This second season is twice as long as the first one, so it covers much more ground. The first half covers the tournament arc, which is my favorite arc in the show so far, and the second half covers the stain arc and the final exam arc, while also diving right into the next arc that will begin in the third season next year. Throughout the second season, we get to learn more and more about these enjoyable characters, with Todoroki getting the best development of them all, showing why he's the fan favorite character of the show. Almost all of the characters get attention at some point, whether big or small, and they all become memorable. The fight scenes, especially in the tournament arc, are phenomenal. The attention to detail, the choreography, how every fight is different in its own way. 
excellent voice acting in both languages. The standout fight of the entire second season is easily the fight between Midoriya and Todoroki, both in the actual fight scenes and in the flashbacks that are shown during it as well. The three-way fight against Dane is also great as well. I think the reason that I love these fights so much is because I enjoy both the heroes and the villains, and that allows me to get more invested with what's going on. Even the new characters that we meet easily win me over through their great personalities and colorful designs. You know you're a great anime if the class of 1B, which I like to refer to in shonen anime as the B team, then you're doing great with your characters. Speaking of the villains, the hero killer Stain is a great villain to follow because of his philosophical viewpoints, which I won't spoil, but they are weirdly bone chillingly truthful. He's definitely a villain that I want to see more of. I am super happy that season 3 is coming out next year because seeing how the villains are gearing up in the last episode, we are in for a thrilling summer camp arc. Go beyond! Plus Ultra!